morning, little boy. Good morning. Cool, it's been blinking cold. Look, ice. What silly sausage. I didn't put my geraniums in before the frost. I'll have to put them in now. I've just done the compost. Just sorted out the chirkins. And now I'm going to cut some greenery for the little spare room. Something is living. Can you see there's a hole there? Something is living in my greenhouse. I wonder what it is. It's probably a rat. Okay, let's get my gloves on and get these geraniums in. Oh, they're cold. Hopefully they'll survive enough for me to take cuttings from. Ooh. Too. It's not that cold. Can you hear those planes? They're so loud when it's cold. I've emptied the bins, got in the recycling bins, clipped some greenery, uh, fed the chickens, just taking them some fresh water, and uh, yeah, feel, feeling slightly ahead of the game for once. It's freezing. There you go, Macy. I put all of these um, wood chips down for them and what they've done is they've scratched them all out of that corner and brought them all down to this end. So when I get back, I'll have to rake them. You can see where Macy's quills are filling out with feathers now because she, she's been, she's molted. I doubt if my phone will pick it up because it's probably amplifying mechanical noises, but in the tree over there, there are so many birds. There's thousands of them. My phone's not picking it up. Can you see that it is shimmering with bird life? The chicken story then. My friend Jo, who's my also my pottery teacher, she is moving house. And originally, they were moving, they were selling their house back in October, September, October, and uh, going to have to put all of their stuff in storage until February next year. Bless you, Margot. <laughs> and she's got these old chickens, and she was beginning to panic a bit about what she was going to do with them. So I said, well, bring them to me and I'll look after them for as long as you need me to. And she said, oh, that is such a relief. That's absolutely lovely. And then the more we were talking about chickens and I was reminiscing about my chickens. And I said, um, oh, I think by the time I give your chickens back to you, I'll be having to get some of my own. And she looked at me and she said, do you just, would you like to just keep mine? Because it's too much for me at the moment with the house move. She's about to do multi-generational living with her parents. And her dad's quite poorly at the moment. So she said, it's just another responsibility that I could I could do with removing. And I said, I can't take your entire coop. I mean, I'll take your birds because they've probably not got much life left in them, but I can't take your setup. She's, it's incredible, this setup, it's from Omelette. It's quite old now, but it's a really big coop and it's got this rather substantial run and uh, when we're out of lockdown, I shall be putting up some fencing so that they can have a bigger area to to roam in. And uh, anyway, she said, said uh, yeah, just, just have it. It will be such a massive weight off my mind. I can't believe how lucky I am. <laughs> how brilliant. I've got these gorgeous hens and this lovely setup, really draw-worthy setup. And um, 
I don't have to give it back. And Jo feels like she's hit the jackpot because she knows how much I love the chickens. She doesn't have to worry about them anymore. And she, it's just a weight off her shoulders. So talk about a win-win. The little bedroom is done for now. So that's spare sheets for when Naomi comes because there's going to be a swap around on Monday. My new baubles tied up with silk ribbons. There, I think it'll be very nice. And do you know what? When Toby's snoring, or when I've got the ump with him, I shall come in here. I'm going to put some pictures up there. I'll probably put something on that wall and maybe something on that wall. What is up with that dog? I've whizzed through everything I needed to do this morning. I've still got a few other bits left to do, but I'll do those when I get back after the school run. I'm going into college now to see Bill's end of term show. I've just called into the supermarket to pick up a few little bits and I've been influenced by Paula stitched by mrs d if you don't know her then where the hell have you been looking forward to having a taste of these i wasn't sure whether to go for the cherry and amaretto because i love amaretto but i decided just to go for the regular ones let's taste these then oh smells good It tastes and feels like flavoured lard. I think I prefer stolen logs. I bought two packets of these because I was sure I'd like them. Wilf won't eat them because they've got raisins in and they'll make his teeth shrivel. Ted will eat them. Bill probably won't. Toby might. I don't think I will. Bill says he's getting too old for the stuff. And the reason why your back's killing you, Bill, is because you've been wearing your rucksack the whole time since we got home from oh, college. Yeah. He's helping me with the hoovering. We're on our way to Kent now. Toby's not feeling very well. It always happens. What no. Bill. Well, what do you say? You have the two there. Let's just say Dad's not feeling particularly well. We do a whole vlog just to all Bill's ankles. Yeah. Um, it always happens that as soon as Toby slows up and relaxes, or is about to go on holiday, he gets bally. Fingers crossed, he wakes up tomorrow and feels brilliant. Almost at Granny and Poppers. Oh, it made it pretty. <laughs> oh, look at you with your glass of wine. I've still got some if you want. I'm hopping in the shower and then getting my head down for a not too early start tomorrow, quite civilised really. So see you in the morning. Uh, tomorrow's vlog will be really short because we're just going to be on the road all the time. Yeah, I can't imagine what I would film. I'll film something though. See you tomorrow. Bye.